Welcome to our continuing lecture in the contemporary world. For this part, we will summarize the first aspect of globalization, which is economic in nature. As we all know, the advancement of science and technology has immensely reduced the cost of transportation and communication, making economic globalization possible. To guide us in our discussion, we will define first what economic globalization is, differentiate two general types of economic policies, which are protectionism and trade uh, liberalization. We will also discuss trade blocks. Um, if we have time, key organizations in economic globalization and uh, the current issues affecting all of us. Don't worry, the exam that follows will focus more on our discussion and not on the current issues. Nevertheless, um, let me caution everyone to please be knowledgeable of the current events so that uh, you will be aware of what's going on with the world and engage in national conversation. It will help you develop what we call critical thinking. If the internet is not available, as many of you were, were saying in the chat, um, at least listen to the news on the radio each morning to get you in the loop. So, so it clearly states here that when we talk about globalization, the main aspect could be economics. The United Nations define economic globalization as the increasing interdependence of world economies as a result of the growing scale of cross-border trade of commodities and services, flow of, the, of international capital, and a wide and rapid spread of technologies. By economics, we mean that we deal with the production distribution, and consumption of goods and services. Of course, the first law of economics is that resources are always scarce or limited. It will have a true meaning to you now since we are in a pandemic, and no one, not even the wealthiest and the richest amongst us, are sure on how long will our resources last. Your parents will tell you not to waste your food, to always conserve water and electricity, and so on and so forth because these are scarce resources. In the latest news that came out in the last week of January 2021, our country has contracted in the year 2020 a negative 9.5% in our gross domestic product, or GDP. GDP simply means the total values of goods and services produced by a country. What does this mean? If our government earned 100 pesos in 2019, it means to say that last year, 2020, we only earned 90 pesos and 50 centavos. And this has been the Philippines' worst economic performance since the World War II in 1947. Of course, you all know that it is the result of the policies to save lives during a COVID pandemic or a COVID crisis. And uh, speaking of COVID-19, pandemics and war, wars most of the time result to crisis aside from the loss of lives. The World War II, for example, killed about 70 million people and affected 30 countries around the world. Since many countries suffered from the consequence of World War II, many people have experienced hunger. Rich countries like Japan and USA resulted to a type of economic policy called protectionism before. This type of economic policy protected one's economy from foreign competition by creating trade barriers or taxes to be paid on imports. What are trade barriers again? Trade barriers control the inflow of imported products by imposing taxes or called tariff. For example, country A produces rice, so is country B. 
but since country A has excessive supplies and needs to trade with other countries to keep its economy moving, country A wants to export his rice to country B. What about the price? This rice may have a cheap price because of oversupply. According to trade agreements, country B may accept imported rice on a limited volume or at minimum access volume or MAV to protect the local farmers of country B who also produce rice. The importers in country B will pay what we call an import quota, meaning to say the importers in country B will pay the tariff or duties, say about 40% before rice is sold or distributed to the market. But if importers are getting tons of rice, the price will go low. Of course, using the principle of economy of scale, imported rice can still be cheaper if you purchase them in large volumes. But imagine class, without tariff or even a reduced tariff, the impact of our local producers would be very terrible. Our rice production could not keep up with the imported ones. Imagine also if country A will not allow exportation of rice and country B is in short supply, especially during a pandemic. Country B will become hungry because it's dependent on the rice produced by country A. But with the international agreement like General Agreement on Tariff and Trade, which is now called the World Trade Organization, the practice of protectionism is reduced. It is a common notion, however, that developed countries use protectionist econom economy policies, or they were protectionists to say the least. The best example of this is Japan, when it refused to allow rice imports into its country to protect its farming sector. The United States fiercely protects its sugar industry, forcing consumers and sugar-dependent businesses to pay higher prices instead of getting cheaper sugar from plantations of Central America. In the Philippines, is the Philippines protectionist? Of course not. Although in 1970, our country was self-sufficient in terms of rice, and, and mind you, we, we, ex we export them to, to Indonesia, China, and Myanmar. Due to the rapid increase of population, our population, our lack of support for our farmers, and limited land resources, which I don't agree much, to produce the total rice requirements, we now become the largest rice importer next to China. In 2020 alone, we had a record high of almost 3 million metric tons of imported rice. Good or bad? You be the judge. Protectionism is not at all good at all. It will weaken one's economy. Without competition, local producers do not innovate and products become more expensive, even to the locals. For example, North Korea, um, example, Canada. Canada's airline industry does not allow investment by foreign companies. The liquor distribution companies in Canada are also owned by the state. They continue to survive this liquor industry even though they are known to be highly inefficient according to some reports. And they also put high import taxes on their dairy products. But in other products, they are also open. The Philippines adopts the second type of economic policy called the trade liberalization. By trade liberalization, we reduce trade barriers to make international trade easier between countries. Trade liberalization is the removal or reduction of restrictions or barriers on the free, on the free exchange of goods between nations. Singapore practices this policy more liberally. More than 99% of all imports into Singapore enter the country duty-free, except for wine, tobacco products, motor vehicles, and petroleum products. This is also called free trade, the trading of goods and services between two or more countries without tariffs or taxes. There are many free trade agreements or FTA between countries. The most famous one is NAFTA or North American Free Trade Agreement which was a treaty between Canada, Mexico, and the United States that eliminated most tariffs between the countries in 1994. NAFTA increased trade, foreign investment, and provided many jobs for lower-wage Mexico. 
In turn, it was also disadvantageous to 600,000 Americans who lost their jobs to Mexicans since companies would do production in Mexico where the labor is low or the labor cost is low, lower. In 2020, this agreement was renegotiated by uh, President Donald Trump and it was now, it was called um, United States, Mexico, Canada Agreement or USMCA, giving US more access to Canada's dairy market, more domestic production of cars and trucks, increases environmental and labor regulations, and intellectual property rights. Canada for, further linked with South Korea with a free trade called um, the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement or the CKFTA in 2015. Canada eliminated 97% of its tariffs lines for good imported from South Korea. And South Korea eliminated 98% of its tariff lines for goods imported from Canada. This also covered coal, agricultural products, forest products, iron, chemicals, and plastics. Aside from free trade, one way to make trade easier is the trade block. Trade blocks are type of intergovernmental agreement, often part of a regional intergovernmental organization, where barriers to trade, trade barriers are tariff, remember, they are reduced or eliminated among the participating states. The European Union or EU is the world's largest trading bloc and second largest economy after the USA. The five largest economies, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom, Italy, and Spain, account for around 70% of the 28-country trading bloc. But in June 2016, the United Kingdom left the EU or the, the European uh, Union. This was known as a Brexit. This was caused by the series of crises which shook British confidence in the EU, including the disastrous handling of European Central Bank after the financial recession or crisis in 2008, which eventually caused uh, unemployment in Greece and uh, Spain. Another example of a trade bloc at the same time an agreement is the USMCA, or formerly NAFTA, or NAFTA. You also have the Trans-Pacific Partnership or TPP, which is a regional trade agreement originally between the USA and 11 countries of the Pacific Rim. But uh, in 2017, unfortunately, US President Trump withdrew from the, from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. In the Asia Pacific, the most successful one is APEC or APEC or the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. APEC ensures that goods, services, investments, and people move easily across borders. A product can be more easily exported with just one set of common standards across all economies. APEC's 21 member countries, including the Philippines, aim to um, increase or create greater prosperity for the people of the region by promoting balance, inclusive, sustainable, innovative, and secure growth, and by accelerating regional economic integration. Last November 2020, 15 countries formed what is poised to be the world's largest trading bloc. This is called the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, with 10 countries in Southeast Asia, as well as South Korea, China, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. For starters, um, leaders of these trade blocs or leaders of these countries, countries hope that the pact, uh, the, the agreement will help uh, will help them recover from the coronavirus pandemic. Earlier last year, India pulled out because of low lower tariff. The purpose of RCEP is to eliminate a range of tariffs on imports within 20 years. Under RCEP, parts from any member nation would would be treated equally, which might give companies in RCEP countries um, an incentive to look within the trade region for suppliers. Under RCEP, parts from any member nation would be treated equally. Aside from the free trade and trade blocks, another way to make trading easier is offshoring. Offshoring is a relocation of a business process from one country to another 
typically an operational process such as a manufacturing or support processes, uh, such as accounting. Here, the manufacturing jobs transfer from developed nations or first world country to developing countries, example Philippines, which in, which in effect reduces the cost of products. So let's take an example, a ball pen. A ball pen from country A costs 1 peso to make. If you export to country B, country B will impose a tariff, say for example, 5 pesos. So the cost of ball pen, ball pen will become 6 pesos. But with offshoring, instead of exporting the product, country A will set up a, new, uh, a manufacturing company in country B for ball pens. What does it do? It will provide job opportunities to the citizens of country B. It will remove the tariff and the price of the ball pen if you bought it at country B is lower. However, this year alone, unfortunately, the following multinational companies have decided to shut down their operations in the Philippines due to pandemic. They used to do offshoring. What are, what are these companies? Honda Cars, Nokia, Nissan, and Wells Fargo. However, it is not just products that are traded, services also. also. One is called outsourcing, or you have probably heard of BPO, or business process outsourcing. Outsourcing is the business practice of hiring a party outside a company or country to perform services and create goods that traditionally were performed in-house by the company or the, the country's um, own employees and, and staff or own citizens. Um, it will cost the it will cut the cost. It will offer a wide range of jobs to other to other countries, ranging from customer support to manufacturing to back office uh, operations. It it will not be a surprise to you that the Philippines is a haven for BPOs or called uh, call centers. Our westernized culture and strong English proficiency, especially Cebuanos are of the reasons why people choose the Philippines. The country boasts its low labor cost, high quality service, and 24-7 support. BPOs in the Philippines specialize in customer services or customer service in front-end operations. Front-end means to say they pay calls, um, support, and uh, they are mostly in the financial services and the telecommunication sector. To wrap up, from an academic point of view, economic globalization refers to the increasing interdependence of world economies as a result of the growing scale of cross-border trade of commodities and services, flow of international capital, and wide and rapid spread of technologies. Cross-border trade is enhanced by trade liberalization, such as free trade, trade blocks, offshoring, outsourcing, the flow of international capital or foreign direct investment has created job opportunities and made business easy for developed countries in developing countries. Of course, the advancement of science and technologies has greatly reduced the cost of transportation and communication, making economic globalization possible. The next lecture, we will briefly talk about the roles of International Monetary Fund World Trade Organization, and World Bank. See you next time, and please don't forget to answer the quiz.